What's up? I'm Jacob Blitzo, your Elixir mentor. We are going to fix our just form component we made with an older version of Phoenix. Since I started this project, a few of the functions that I was using uh, were removed and one includes the hidden input and the second was the text area function. And so we're going to update them to use the core component input function that is given to us Go ahead and make sure our Postgres Docker container is running. Mine is. And then I'm going to just open up my terminal here and I'll CD into my project, which is uh, documents, develop, Elixir mentor, and then we have Elixir gist. And then I'll open up VS code. Okay, so let's first go ahead and look at what's broken. Uh, well, it's not broken yet. I'll update my dependencies and then it'll be broken. So we're going into our gist form in our live directory, go into a gist form component, our, our live component that we created. And you'll see this hidden input function. So that is no longer available to us. And then you'll see this text area function that is no longer available to us either. So currently I need to fix that. So currently this works because I am on an older version of like Phoenix HTML. Um, and we're going to just update all of these right now. So I'm going to go ahead and update Phoenix to dot 11. And then we're going to do Phoenix HTML is we're going to do four dot, uh, one dot one. And we might as well do the live reload as well to dot five dot three and then live view. We'll do 20 dot 14 and we'll might as well do the dashboard too. I think we have a, a dot three now. All right. So go ahead and save this and then let's open up our terminal and do a mix depths git. Do we have to do um, mix clean? Mix depths git. We'll just delete our lock file because I'm blanking on the con the command I need. So now mix depths git will update all of our dependencies. And now if I do mix phx dot server to try to run this project. It's going to compile and then we're going to see some errors. Okay. So we have undefined function text area arity three right there. And then we have undefined function hidden input arity three undefined as well. So our project doesn't compile. And I, uh, I know a lot of you have been messaging me and I, have finally <laughs> taken the time to check out what is going on. So the first one we're going to take care of is the, the hidden input and we're going to, so what we used here for like the name and description, this dot input, we're just calling a co um, a core component that was created for us. And we're going to do the same thing here for the hidden, the hidden input. And we're just going to do um, less than, and then we can do dot input. And we're going to set a type here of hidden. All right. And then we're going to, for our field, uh, we are going to set this uh, inside of curly braces. And this is where we do our at form. And it's going to be for our value ID or key ID. And then we're going to set the value to our ID as well. And this is, so this is doing, and then um, forward slash greater than. So this input now is doing the same thing we were doing with this function. So our form, it's for a key ID and the value is at ID. And we're just setting the value here and it's hidden because we just need access to this ID for updating our gists. If you remember that video where we had to fix that bug because updating was actually creating new ones because ID was uh, nil. So now we can delete that line there. Now we have our hidden value. 
So that's pretty cool. And now let's go down to our text area. This guy, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to use our, um, the dot input core component. So less than dot input. And then, um, we'll do our forward slash greater than first. We're going to set the type and that is a string of text area. Okay. And then we're going to set the, the field attribute and the field attribute is going to be, um, from our form and from our ecto schema, we want to make sure that we're calling our markup text. So markup, mark, uh, mark up underscore text. Okay. So this is the same as what we did up here in this function. We're just setting our field attribute. Okay. And then we're going to have our class. So our class is going to be, and instead of a colon, we just have to do equal. And then we have our text, our string here. So we're going to still use our text area tailwind class that we created. And we want it to take the full width. And then we want just the bottom right corner to be rounded with a medium bend. And then uh, we're going to set our placeholder. So a lot of this stuff is still the same. It's just an equal sign instead of colons. And then we're going to say insert code dot, dot, dot. And then we're going to do our auto complete here. And we're going to turn that off. And then we are going to do our, um, our, our debounce, our PHX debounce still. So PHX and instead of underscore it's dash and then say debounce, and we're going to set this to blur. And then we have to do our hook and that is PHX dash hook instead of underscore hook. And then we're calling the same thing. So update align numbers. All right. So I think we have everything we needed here. Cool. And now, so now we can delete the piece that wasn't working or stopping us from compiling our project. And if I save this and go back to the terminal, let's go ahead and run our project. Um, value ID. Let's see. I have an extra curly brace. Oh, I see our curly brace moved from our form. There we go. So make sure the field value, the form ID has its own curly braces and value has its own curly braces. Save that. And let's go back to our terminal and come and run our project. All right, there we go. So we are up and running. And now if I go ahead and pull open Firefox, we're going to go to localhost. All right. So cool. Kind of right. We have our text area and at least things are compiling and let's just make sure our, our, our hook is still working for the line numbers. Okay. So our line numbers are still working, but obviously our tailwind classes are not working. So let's, let's figure that out. So what we need to do is first of all, the dot input, if we go over to the Elixir just web components, and then open up core components. This is where our input function is. And you can see that we have, so go down to line 343 or 341. You're going to see an input with type text area. So when we pass in type, it's pattern matching to text area. And what you're going to notice is one, um, the class right here, it's just manually set. So they don't, they're not taking our attribute class. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this a little bit. We still want this default behavior just in case this component's being used somewhere else. We don't want to remove the way it already works, but we're going to add a class attribute. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this top string in the class, the very first item in the class list, copy that. 
And then we have to go up above to our the top of our inputs where we see these other attributes. So you'll see them starting at line 277. And we're going to just go in at line 282 and we're going to create another attribute. We're going to create an attribute um, called class and a comma. And then this is of type string. And then we can set a default value here. And our default value is going to be the, the CSS class or the Tailwind classes we just copied. And we're going to just paste those here. So what this does is this allows us to add an attribute. So when we're passing in class here, we're setting an attribute, right? And then up here, so then it's going to set to whatever value we're passing in. But if it's nil, by default, it'll be the default um, text area. So we're not breaking anything. So if we use this input text area, it's still going to look like, um, sorry, still going to look like this. Okay. So now let's go ahead. And now that we have this attribute set up, we can go back down to our text area. And what's really cool is adding an attribute allows the value to be assigned before declaring it in our template. So, um, Every time we call a uh, render for this component, it's not going to re-render the whole thing because we're actually using um, an attribute that's set before our HTML is being rendered. So let's delete this first line. And now to access that attribute we just created, all we have to do is do the at class. And then if we save it, now when we go back to our um, local host, you'll notice it looks a little better and it's working. Um, there is one little weird thing um, with uh, our full width is definitely not working, but we just uh, fixed core component to take a class attribute, which is really cool. Super simple fix, I think. And so now if we go back to our just component to fix this other problem, all, all we're going to do is um, wrap a div around our input here. So we're just going to say div. Um, let's go ahead and put, I'm going to just cut the closing div and put it underneath our input. And we're going to just add um, a flex grow class here. So we're going to just say flex grow and that will allow this div to take up the rest of the space that our line numbers aren't taking so if i save this and then we go back to firefox now everything is where it should be and let's make sure this works so test file.ex and i don't know let's just paste some html here We'll paste that and then we'll actually say HTML and then create our gist. And there we go. Everything is working again. So that's pretty cool. So we learned how to refactor our core components and include a class argument with a default value so we don't unintentionally break code in other places when we make these changes. So I'm glad we got this all updated and now it'll work for everyone. So as always, if you need help or wanna check out the solutions, check out the GitHub link in the description. Join my Discord server Elixir Mentor if you have questions or just want to hang out and chat. That link is in the description as well. If you wanna learn how to build scalable, production ready, full stack and REST API solutions, hit that subscribe button now. I'm Jacob Litzo, your Elixir mentor, and I'll see you in the next video.